Okay, so the United States leg of the Clancy tour has concluded and boy, we have some lore to discuss. Okay, so just to give you some context for the lore, before the show started, Tyler tweeted out and said that this tour represents a flashback that takes place within Clancy's mind as he's leading up to the confrontation with Nico in the tower. At least that's kind of how we interpreted that tweet. So this flashback idea manifests itself in many different ways within the show. Firstly, they're playing music from every single era, so that in itself is a flashback. But the FPE event, the fan event that tours with the show, is also a metaphor for a flashback. This fan event basically shows merch and memorabilia for all past eras and shows some really cool steps that the band has taken over the years. But the most exciting thing that everybody was looking forward to with the FPE is that every single show night, there was a brand new letter from one of the citizens of Dima. And this is where we see some of the best world building of this universe that I've seen since its inception. We slowly start to gather that all of these citizens are somehow partaking in a revolution within the walls of Dima. They're sending letters to each other, they're detailing their day-to-day -day roles within the city, and they're all hinting at a revolution and a rebellion that's taking place right underneath the bishop's nose. Now, I'm not gonna read off and summarize every single letter in this video. I'll link down below some resources that do just that, but I am gonna summarize the overall message and feel and the rebellion that these citizens are talking about time and time again. Now, this is 21 Pilots after all, so of course there is some kind of hidden message that's strewn throughout all these letters. If you take all these messages and line them up chronologically, you'll see that some of the texts have double bolded letters. There were 37 letters for 37 shows and all of those letters came together to form this singular message. We must destroy them or we will become them. And if we become them, we must do better. Now, I'm not gonna read through all these messages. I think they're really cool, like I said, and I think they're definitely worth your time but I am gonna highlight one in particular, and that is the final letter that was put together over the last couple shows. And it's actually from the Torchbearer, or Josh, and he's writing to Clancy, AKA Tyler. You are what they said you were. I see weathering on your face and the journey you've been on. Although we were away, I hope you now know that I've never left you. It's time, Clancy. They believe in the movement. They are ready for this opposition to end. They are ready to defeat this archaic rule once and for all. We can meet out in trench at camp to lay out our plan. We will bring you everything you need. We have support from yellow and red now, and our militia is strong. No matter what, when that day comes, we will get you to the tower. Covering you, TV. So this is the final letter that was sent that basically brings us up to speed to the events of Paladin Strait. This entire revolution has reached its boiling point and they're ready to support Clancy in this final effort. However, I don't believe this revolution was successful and in reality, the bishops knew it was coming this entire time. On the Torchbearer letter fragments, there are black handprints, which imply defeat via seizing. Remember, ever since the stressed out music video, the black hands and neck represent blurry face or bishop control. And seeing that handprint on the Torchbearer letter is not a good sign. Also, you can see that this Torchbearer letter is typed and people within Trench only have access to pen and paper. They don't have typewriters that they bring around. Typewriters represent uniformity. They represent people that are writing from a place within Dima. Once again, they don't have typewriters in Trench. So this typed out message implies that the original message, which was probably handwritten, was secured by the bishops and transcribed with a typewriter within Dima for distribution. Also, during the last night of the tour, when this final torchbearer letter was revealed, Blurryface tweeted out a picture of one of the bishop robes with that same letter secured on the midsection. It's almost like he wanted the fans to find that specific letter. That same bishop robe is secured with the flag that represents my blood, which may imply that they're aware that the Torchbearer and Clancy have this relationship where the Torchbearer can project with Clancy, which that kind of theme was set up within the My Blood music video, which kind of had a spiritual successor within the navigating music video. Wow, that was that was a that was a bunny trail. Also, the Torchbearer does distinguish the reds and the yellows, which are seemingly two separate factions of banditos. 
We saw this in the Overcompensate music video where we saw Dima Citizens wearing red and yellow duct tape. Now, a common theory for this is that there's kind of two different types of banditos. There's kind of the reconnaissance type, which is the yellows. Since the bishops can't see yellow, they're responsible for getting in and out of Dima, bringing people out as quickly and as efficiently as possible and they use the color yellow to make sure that they're undetected during these operations. Now the red faction so far, we've only really seen within the Overcompensate music video, these are citizens openly wearing red within the Dima walls. And the common theory is that they don't care if they're seen or not. So they're taking back the color red to openly show their opposition towards the bishops. They strap those colors on and they're ready to go to war. So by the torchbearer saying that they have the support of the red and the yellow factions, Basically, everybody is going to be helping out in this final push. And that leads me to think that we really haven't seen the last of this story. I, I know that it's almost like a meme at this point, like it is not the end, but I still feel like there is going to be one more music video or a final chapter or a single that shows the Reds coming to the aid of Tyler as he's being constricted by the hands of Nico. Additionally, during the last night of the United States tour at the FPE event, there were a bunch of notices that were strewn all over the event with Dear Clancy cryptically scribbled on all of them. This is probably from Blurryface or the bishops or just the council, and they're notifying us the fans as well as the citizens of Dima that they're aware that this rebellion is happening. And the notices just basically read that if you see any unusual activity, report it to the council uh, because they don't want any rebellions happening. But this act in itself shows that they're aware that this rebellion is about to take place, which means that in the Paladin Straight music video, when Blurryface comes out and grabs Tyler by the throat, he expected him there. Tyler was expected. Blurryface knew that this plan was about to play out, and he took that opportunity to strike down Clancy. There are also some other tidbits that hint to the fact that the bishops knew that the rebellion was happening. During the live show, there are visuals of seized vultures surveying the audience, as well as Clancy performing, so they know that this rebellion is brewing. Also, during the Judge fan video that plays every single night of the tour, the bishops have interrupted and spliced themselves into that very video, kind of symbolizing that they're always there. And one final lore bit that I found interesting within the live shows, during navigating, they unveil the Dima Towers on stage. And when they're playing this song, there is a ton of fire completely consuming Dima and the entire city. Further emphasizing that Clancy and the Banditos and the Torchbearer need to burn it all down to do better themselves. Now, there are some theories about Clancy becoming a bishop, and I can get into that in a later video, but Ultimately, they keep hinting at Blurryface and, and Dima and the towers catching on fire. They've been teasing this imagery since the outside music video, and we keep seeing this imagery with the towers on fire from the Digital Remains pack to now the live show. The album cover itself even implies that everything is going to be burned to the ground. So I just think that we are going to get another chapter or another final music video or single that references this event that that shows Dima actually burning to the ground. If not, I'd be kind of disappointed. Like I want to see Dima on fire. I think that'd be really sick. And I think that's that's a small ask because they've been hinting at it for so long. And don't even get me started on the line, the new single that's coming out next month. That's a, that's a whole nother video. But I think that's it. I think that is everything that brings us to the present. And I'm curious if the abroad shows, the international shows are going to have more lore uh, especially because I'm sure they're going to be playing the line in future live performances. So that's going to be really exciting. Did I miss anything? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. I'm slowly getting out of my rut of not making videos, uh, but it's been really exciting to follow this entire tour. And uh, I can't wait to see him myself May 2025 in Dublin, Ireland. If you're going, let me know. We can maybe meet up. That'd be awesome. Remember, as always, call somebody today, whether that's a friend or family member, you may be saving their life. This is Jake with Soul and Potential, and I will see you when I see you.